Good morning and welcome to another 10 at 10. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yesterday, I shared a verse from Psalms. Talks about the fact that God loads us up daily with benefits and he personally watches over our salvation. And so uh, that's a good thing to rejoice about. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? One reason why is because he is loading me up today. I am getting a, a bucket load, a, a, a truck load. I'm getting a container ship load of God's benefits today in my life. And I encourage you to have the same attitude. But we've been looking in Colossians chapter 1. And um, let's go ahead and read all of the verses of this prayer. Then we're going to focus in on the remaining verses that we've not gone through, and we'll take them. Um, we'll take we'll take our time with it uh, because we've got a lot of ten at tens that we can still teach on this. All right, so Colossians chapter one verse nine says, "For this reason, since the day we heard about you." We have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing up in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins." All right, so now let's go to uh, verse 11, because yesterday we finished up with verse uh, verse 9 or 10. Now we're on verse 11. It says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father. So I want us to look at the, the script, the first part of this verse that says being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. So we know that that might goes back to Ephesians chapter one, talks about the that great power that raised Christ from the dead. Okay. Now, what I want us to do is I want us to go to um, a favorite verse of mine in Ephesians chapter six. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter six, and we're going to start in verse 10, okay? So remember, we're talking about being strong in the Lord, okay? Uh, coming out of Colossians 1, 11. This scripture directly goes with it in Ephesians 6, 10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I can be strong in my own power. I can be strong in my own might, but mine will run out. If I really want to have the um, patience, the endurance, those things that we just read in Colossians chapter one, if I want all of those, I've gotta be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Now, let's read a little bit more of why we wanna be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Verse 11 of chapter six, Ephesians six, says, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms, okay? So when we look at those verses in verse 12, it gives us the, the feel 
that we are in a fight and we are in a fight to win, okay? And we're gonna go a little bit further down if we have opportunity to go through the armor of God. But what, I'm, what I want you to see here, the reason why the, the Apostle Paul was talking to the Colossians and the Ephesians about being strong in the Lord and talking to them about um, God's mighty power is because we need to see that Jesus has already won the fight. And what we are doing is we are taking our stand. In other words, Jesus has won the battle, but he now places us on, on in the earth to maintain and advance what he's already won, okay? Okay or to be, be in domination, all right? So when I, when I read these verses, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You know, I get this, I, I get this feel, and I had it for many years, and I know that, that many others have, have had it, is, Oh, you know, don't make the devil mad because if you make the devil mad, he's gonna come and he's gonna pounce on you and there's nothing you can do about it because, uh, you know, he's just, he's just all powerful and we equate the devil with God. He's not the same as God. He's a fallen angel, okay? He is of an angelic being. When he, um, when Adam gave the authority of earth to the devil, the devil did not step up and become equal with God. He's still a fallen angel. And he only has ability to work in your life if you give him that ability. That's the reason why it says the devil goes around um, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour not can devour, not will devour, may devour. You are the person that gives the opportunity for the devil to devour in your life or not. Now you say, now that's, that's a pretty strong statement. Well, let's go back to Ephesians chapter one, where we spent a couple of weeks, and let's just reiterate those, those verses. That's the whole reason the Apostle Paul is t talking to the Ephesians. Pray these things so that you understand them and know them and get them deep down in you so that you have a clear understanding of your authority on this earth. Verse 19 of chapter one, Ephesians 1, 19 says, that power is like the working of his mighty strength. That's the same power we're talking about in our life. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, verse 20, which he exerted in Christ, which he put in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far, listen to this, this is good, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fulfills everything in every way. We are his body, okay? so. Go back up to verse 21, far above all rule and authority. That power God exerted into Christ and, it, and that power put Christ far above all rule and authority. So now let's bounce back to Ephesians chapter six. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil 
in the heavenly realms. We just read out of Ephesians 1 that Christ is high above all of these things. And because we are in Christ, we are high above all of these things positionally in Christ, okay? So verse 13 then tells us uh, to put on the armor of God and to make your stand. Verse 14 says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition, take, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So Ephesians chapter six, putting on the armor of God is telling, uh, uh, is directly related to um, Colossians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one, and Ephesians chapter three prayers. We're praying those prayers so we understand who we are in Christ, okay? So um, we're gonna stop here for today, but you need to know you are not defenseless. You are not at the mercy of the devil. Uh, let me go far as far as saying, because it's true, but I don't have scripture right now to back it up. I don't have it in my references here on my notes. But you're far above fear. You're far above worry. You're far above sickness. You're far above those things. So if those things are pestering you, you need to take your authority like you would. Um, I remember a story of, of Smith Wigglesworth, who was an um, a, a English, English man. He was a plumber, got called into the ministry, and then he began to minister all over. Uh, it's confirmed that at least 13 people were raised from the dead in his ministry. Uh, millions saved just an incredible man of God. But he said one day he was standing at the bus stop and there was this lady who, was, who came up next to him and this little dog followed the lady. And the lady kept on saying to the dog, go home, go home, go home. And the dog wouldn't listen. It just kept wagging its tail and just being there. Then the bus pulled up and the woman stomped her foot and said, get. And the dog tucked his tail between his legs and ran home. And immediately Smith Wigglesworth just said, that's how you got to deal with the devil. And too many people are dealing with sickness, worry, fear, uh, poverty, all of those things. They're dealing with it like a little chihuahua that is around the wagonist tail. It looks kind of cute. It looks a little bit harmless, but it'll kill you. And the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And right now he's probably in the stealing phase of you. Or he might be in the slow killing phase of you. But if you let it keep on going, it will come to the kill part, the destroy part of you, you, ha you have the authority to say, get in the name of Jesus. James tells us, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That, word, that, that phraseology in the Greek is, he will flee from you in terror. So it's not just he'll go back home. He will leave in terror. Now, what happens if he returns? You do the same thing over again. And after you've done it enough times and it gets on the inside of you, I have authority to deal with this fear that keeps coming around. I have authority to deal with this poverty issue that keeps coming around. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have all things in Christ Jesus. 
He's given me everything I need for godly, for this life and life to come. Godliness, he's given us power. I'm getting a couple of verses mixed up here, but you get it. Second Peter chapter one, verses one through eight. Talk about that. And this is the reason why we're coming at you, coming to you on the 10 at 10s is because so many people in the body of Christ are continuing to allow things in their life that are not God. They actually think they are, a, are normal. But I am telling you, fear is not normal. It is abnormal. It is anti-Christ against Christ, against the anointing and his anointing. And as long as you coddle it, it will stay. But when you take your authority and you say, devil, I'm done with this. God, I submit to you. I submit to your peace. Devil, I command your fear to go. Go in the name of Jesus. You can even say get. You have so much authority. You don't, you don't have to say in the name of Jesus with everything because God, Jesus has given you authority on the earth. Now, we know that every name is under the name of Jesus. That's the reason why we use it so much. But there have been times that I've spoken to my body that I've not, I've not put in the name of Jesus or a prayer in it. I've just told my body sometimes, just shut up. Just shut up. No, I rebuke that, that uh, headache in the name of Jesus. Oh, I just said it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I rebuke that headache right now. Go, get out of here. Just get and, and when I take that kind of a stance, usually within five minutes, the headache is gone. Whatever is bothering me is gone because I'm establishing within me whose I am. And these prayers, I'm telling you, pray them. Pray them out loud so your ears can hear your mouth. The Ephesians 1 prayer, the Ephesians 3 prayer, and the Colossians 1 prayer. It will change your destiny. You will be able to see differently and you will never make a change in your life. You will never go beyond what you can see. So if all you can see is the house you're living in right now, that's all that you'll ever be in. If the sickness is all that you can see right now, then that's all that you will ever be. God is never coming to heal you. He has already provided healing for you in the cross and in the resurrection. It is our responsibility to take it up. We can say to our blind eyes, see in the name of Jesus. I command my eyes to see right now in the name of Jesus. Every day, my eyesight's getting better. If the high blood pressure, every day that blood pre that that is going down. Whatever it is, fear has to subside because he's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Now I'm telling you, the fight of faith is sticking with it when you don't feel like it because the, the dog of the devil will come and he'll 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 try to pull, he'll try to get up in your lap when you're feeling all bad and he'll try to give you those little voices well you know you it, it's justified you know it's it's okay you have a right to feel that way you have you know nobody understands that's the little dog of the devil wagging his tail trying to keep you exactly where you are and the word of God tells us to throw off the chains, throw off the sin, throw off the stuff that so easily entangles that causes us to not run the race that God set before us. All right, well, that was a 10 at 20 today, but <laughs> I, got, I got going and I knew that there were some people that needed to hear it, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up right now and let's just agree right now in the name of Jesus, 
that the words that have been spoken are going down into our hearts, producing a mighty harvest. Now you have, once again, you have the authority. There, even as your pastor, there is only so far I can help you. You have to get to the place where you are helping yourself with the word of God. Okay? So I can pray for you to some degree, but it's you that has to live in it and it's you that has to take it on to the next level. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these anointed words that have come to us out of Ephesians and out of Colossians, out of 2 Peter chapter 1. Chapter 1. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that your anointing destroys yokes of bondage. So in the name of Jesus, I command yokes of bondage to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And the light of the gospel of, and of your word is illuminating on the inside. Thank you, Father God, the veils of darkness are being removed in the name of Jesus. Your healing power is flowing in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you're doing immeasurably more than all we can think or ask or imagine because your great power is at work within us and we give full place for that power to work in us and come out of us in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Have a wonderful day.